TPO Rankings. Hello and welcome back to the TPO Rankings show slash podcast. With me is Jake. Jake, how are you going this evening? Very well, Cody. Thank you. How's it going there? Doing very well. Uh, we're just sort of discussing what we're going to be talking about uh, on this show. We don't do a lot of preparation, do we? Do a little bit, but uh, probably not as much as we should. <laughs> Yeah, not as much as we should. Well, you you, you spend a lot of time putting the, the graphics and stuff together, so I appreciate that. But I'll be honest, I sort of just come here and go, all right, what are we talking about tonight? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Most of the time is spent actually updating the rankings, to be honest. Mm. And then once that's done, it's just a matter of uh, putting out a few images of some of the interesting stuff. Yeah. All right, so we're going to kick things off, Jake, tonight with FFA Cup. We had some games and some big, big teams out already. And then um, as per usual, we'll run through the MPLs around the country. And yeah, it looks like all of them are on board now. So as of this coming weekend, we've got South Australia and, and Canberra joining the ranks. So a big show. Yep. Let's get started. So Jake, I'm not going to run through any of the results in particular, unless you want, you've got any others to mention apart from... How's this? These big sides out of the FFA Cup already. Heidelberg, obviously, being the biggest one, and uh, you're representing the the jersey there. <laughs> yep. um, Altona Magic, St Albans Saints. So three uh, MPL teams from Victoria there, all gone. Morton Bay from Queensland are gone. They got knocked out against uh, another MPL club up here, Olympic. Uh, to be expected, but it's still there's still a, a decent team uh, who've gone from the cup yeah. and Canberra Olympic, which I, I believe we mentioned last week. I think that happened uh, the weekend before. But yeah, so they're the big yeah. teams. Did I miss any, Jake? No, those are the MPL sides, as far as I'm aware. There are a couple, um, one one or two other MPL sides in the ACT that got knocked out because they were playing other MPL sides, but um, probably not names that you would expect to be in the yeah. final rounds, but whereas Canberra Olympic definitely was one of those. Remind me, if you're aware, Jake, ACT, do they get one spot or do they get half a spot? or They get the one spot. They get one, yep. Yep. And I think okay. Canberra Olympics had it a couple of times. Tuggeranong had it once. Um, yep. Canberra FC, who are now Canberra Croatia, probably the favourites uh, remaining mm. for this year. Yeah, so uh, plenty of games. I saw New South Wales did their next round of draws today. Uh, still a bunch of teams left there. Queensland, we had a bunch of wet weather up here on over the Easter weekend, but there were games played. Um, my game, Calandra, we, our game was postponed. It's actually just been rescheduled, Jake, for Tuesday night, coming Tuesday night. So, yeah, we'll, we'll just we'll keep um, people updated. And for those who have joined the FA Cup tipping group, I'm, I've made a post today. It's been a little while, but we'll, we'll start updating that as it gets more, closer and closer. Um, and so, also, Cody, um, I just saw before we hit record, actually, that Football West, uh, Western Australia, were doing their live draw now or they were doing okay. it live um probably yep. 20 minutes ago so they're down to like 19 clubs i believe um so all the mpl clubs being drawn there as well i haven't had a awesome. chance to look at, at any of the fixtures but uh, i'm sure there'll be some mpl matchups there worth looking yep. at okay so the act mpl kicks off this weekend um there's four games because there's eight teams in this competition west canberra wanderers hosting gungalin united monaro panthers hosting canberra olympic Tungur Nong Tuggeranong hosting Bel Conan. And Jake, your pick of the pick of the round, what is it? Yeah, I pulled out Kuma Tigers uh, against Canberra Croatia. Uh, Canberra Croatia, the highest ranking team in the ACT at the moment. So that's kind of the by reason quite I picked a, them. By quite a bit as well, Jake. They're, they're ranked 58th. Yep. The next best is 104th. Yeah, 103rd, Gung Arlen, and 104th oh, yeah. is yeah. is Kuma. So that's why I picked this game. Um, it's It's two of the higher ranked sides from the ACT um, in, from previous years, obviously. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the game that I'm looking at. Um, Canberra Croatia favourites by quite a, a decent margin, mm. like you mentioned. Um, but we but, have no idea what, what they're, what they're season, looking yeah, who like knows? Yeah, with the recruitment exactly. and whatnot. Okay, let's go to northern New South Wales. It looks like my sheet is updated via alphabetical order tonight, so that's the way we'll be doing it. Sorry, Victoria. Um, so Northern New South Wales, Broadmeadow Magic getting the three points against uh, Newcastle Olympic 2-1. Edgeworth beating Lambton 2-0. That's a big result there. That was, I think, yeah. our pick of the round last week, Jake. Charlestown, Azuri beating Adamstown, Rosebud 2-0. Western Workers, after their disastrous start to the season, losing, was it 7-1, Jake, to Lambton in round one? Yeah, that's right. Yep. They've come back with a 1-0 win over Valentine. And Maitland, the only team, two from two wins. They beat Lake Macquarie City. 3-2. So Lake Macquarie, Jake, I think they drew with Broadmeadow in round one. Yeah, two all draw in round one. That's right. 
and then they've just narrowly gone down to Maitland. So they, they may be a bit of a shock um, team there. They've had two tough games, potentially the toughest. Well, as long as they're not playing Edgeworth next week. Um, actually, we can see who they're playing. Oh, they're playing Edgeworth. <laughs> I, I did not mean to do that. I was just looking up their fixtures. But anyway, Jake, what's your pick of the, the round coming? Um, I didn't have any game that I wanted okay. to preview. Um other than just watch it because there's no kind of top of the table matchups, um, mm. but probably Newcastle Olympic and Maitland for the reason you, you mentioned Maitland two from two and kind of seeing how far they can go on with it. Well, Jake, mine is my pick's going to be Lake Macquarie versus V Edgeworth Eagles for the reason that they've showed some decent um, results for the first well one point from two games, not not great, but they've they've played two of the top teams now. They're playing the third top team and they we've only given them six percent chance of picking up the win, Jake. So. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. All right, let's move on to the New South Wales NPL and a uh, full round of games. Marconi 2 all with Wollongong Wolves. Manly go top of the table, 2-0 uh, winners over Sydney FC. Sutherland went down 2-0 at home to Blackdown City. Uh, Mount Druitt Town Rangers beat Sydney Olympic 2-1. Rockdale beat Arpia 2-0. So Arpia um, still bottom of the table. And the shock of the round, Jake, Sydney United Top of the table going into the round. Um, and I think they won their first four games on the trot, going down 5-1 to Northbridge Bulls. Did you see that one coming? Not even close. And I was watching – I wasn't watching the game, but I was getting notifications for goals, and I think they were 5 nil up. It must have been close to 5 um, at half time. It was all mm. very quick, and they just the goals just kept coming. So, uh, yeah, big surprise and big, as we'll get into pretty soon, big impact on the rankings for Sydney United. No, I can't believe that result. Who would have picked it, eh? Um, yeah, as I mentioned, Manly uh, go, well, they're equal top with Sydney United, Rocktail uh, third and Blacktown City fourth. Northbridge with that 5-1 uh, win, go up to fifth on the table. Uh, Jake, did you pick any games for the weekend ahead out of uh, New South Wales? Yeah, I've picked the Sydney United and Wollongong game. Um, two sides that Start of the season, I would have expected to be in the finals. Mm. Uh, Wollongong, though, sitting in uh, 11th out of the, the 12 sides. So, and Sydney United still in second, but um, yeah, after that big loss to Northbridge, I just think it'll be an interesting game. And um, I, I did figure out, Cody, I don't know if this is confirmed or if it's just a proposed change or something, but the promotion relegation rules in New South Wales are different this year. Um, okay. So at the moment, they have MPL 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, of 12 teams each. Apparently, they're going to three leagues, so MPL 1, 2, and 3 of 16 teams each, um, which oh, wow. is a big change. And what mm. that would mean is that there's no relegation this year, but the top four MPL 2 sides will come up. So if Sounds that's like the case... Someone, some, like, someone from RP is making some rules there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, whether that changes the or lessens the pressure on the bottom sides this year, I'm not sure. But, you know, teams like Wollongong mm. and RP aren't going to want to continue with this sort of form. So, uh, mm. yeah. Sydney United and Wollongong. Yeah, that's not a bad game. My pick of the round, Jake, would be Manly at home to Sydney Olympic. Um, Jake, I can't believe Arpia are down in 39th on the rankings now. Yeah, I mean, they were the highest ranked side, weren't they, for probably 12 months ago or just before Mm. the start of the 2020 season for them. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to Queensland, Jake. Uh, No games over the weekend due to Easter. Um, So we'll just go straight to your pick of the round. Yeah, so for me, it's Gold Coast Knights and Brisbane Royal Youth Team. Um, Gold Coast Knights currently first on the table. Uh, they've had four games, three wins and a draw. And they're, they're one of those sides that for the past, what, three seasons probably, Cody, correct me if I'm wrong, have been in the finals. So that's, it's mm. for the most part been the same four sides making the finals for, for a number of years and they're one of them. Um, um, sorry, I got that the wrong way around. Gold Coast are third, Brisbane Raw are first. Uh, but uh, yeah, Gold Coast Knights one point behind them at the moment. Mm. And Brisbane Royal Youth Team is one of those ones that we, we say this almost every time we talk about it, one of the youth, the uh, A-League youth teams. Um, they're good on their day, but then they're inconsistent. And so far they've just shown quality. I mean, they smacked Brisbane Strikers 6-0 um, a couple of last game round. Uh, so yeah. I, I'm not sure what to expect from this one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised either way, to be honest. Yeah. Um there's two interesting matchups. I've got Jake Capalaba and Magpies just because with the odds are 50-50. It's the only game there we have 50-50. Yep. And, and, and could have an impact on relegation, that one. Ah, for sure. And um, Brisbane Strikers at home to Logan Lightning. I reckon Logan, uh, will, we haven't got them as favorites. They're still sort of climbing up the rankings a bit and Strikers are slowly, slowly falling. Yep. 
or well, not so slowly. Um, but I reckon Logan will pick the three points up there. But it'll be a good game nonetheless. Um, all right, South Australia, first round. Jake, what's your pick of the round? Yeah, so this is another one kind of like the ACT until we see some results and um, figure out what the form is like. We're not really sure who the top sides are, but going purely off the rankings and uh, Campbelltown City being the strongest in South Australia, sitting currently in 14th, which we're, we'll get into the top 25 soon. Um, and they've been the strongest side for a number of years there. So I've picked Campbelltown City at home to Adelaide City, and I'm expecting Adelaide City to be one of the challengers for the the title or, or finalist spots. Mm. Uh, Campbelltown City, though, are about 66% chance of winning or favourites, um, according to the rankings. So, yeah, that's the one that I've got. Um, there are a number of good-looking games there, but, again, until we kind of know a bit more, games like Adelaide Comets and Metro Stars is yeah, really interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and even Adelaide Blue Eagles and Raiders who have both been strong um, sure. over the last couple of years. So, yeah, uh, interesting first round anyway. And uh, for those who missed it, I think we mentioned it on a previous episode, South Australia is on MPL TV now, so all of the games mm. uh, will be live streamed. Good stuff. To Tasmania, they didn't have any games over Easter um, as well. So have you picked any games for the upcoming weekend out of Tasmania? No, nothing to preview here really. Oh. Um, none of the top sides... Um, or traditional top sides are playing each other. The, probably the interesting one, though, Cody, is King Bar Lions and Glenarchy Knights, who are second and third on the table. And they're the, the two sides we mentioned in previous seasons were copping some very mm. uh, high scoring losses, uh, but they're both looking pretty good this year, two wins from two. So that would probably be mm. the pick if I had to pick one. I've got myself King Bar Lions, um, pink goalkeeper jersey behind me as well, Jake. So there you Very go. Nice. All right, let's go to the last one, Victorian MPL. So we, again, didn't have any uh, games over the Easter break. Um, so, Jake, have you picked – I imagine you would have picked a game from Victoria. Um, I almost didn't, to be honest, because okay. there's uh, yeah, there's a, a few kind of interesting ones and I was having a hard time picking which one, if I had to pick one, um, I, would, I would highlight. But – I did go with Oakley Cannons and Melbourne Knights uh, because they're both quite high on the rankings, up uh, on the well, the rankings, but also on the the ladder. Oakley Cannons are currently in third, and Melbourne Knights in fifth. Um, Melbourne Knights have dropped a couple of, or some points over the previous couple of rounds. They started you know, very strongly mm. and were up in first place for probably until round four, and in the last two rounds they've um, dropped points. So yeah, that would be my pick of the round. There's um, you know South Melbourne still on top of playing Green Gully in the rankings, yeah, so that should be, be that's a fairly one. close. Mm. Um, but also even towards the bottom of the table, if you want to start looking at those clubs that are um, you know, have potential relegation threat, although it's still early, but l- the likes of Dandy Thunder and St Albans um, are playing each other in the rankings, so that'll be a nice close one as well. And Jake, traditionally this game would have been a blockbuster: Heidelberg versus uh, Bentley Greens. But you haven't even mentioned it there. Yeah, well, I mean, they're both. Heidelberg's still in fourth. Bentley Greens are struggling down in, uh, what, 11th? So, I don't know. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. funny how you, things change. You, you say struggling, though. They're only, um, what, five points off top of the table. So, it's still yeah. still very, yep. very, very early. Um, I lied, Jake. Uh, Victoria obviously wasn't the last league. Western Australia is the last league. So, they actually had some games on, I, th- I think they had a bunch on Thursday, Easter th- the day before. Uh, yeah, that sounds right. And then right. they had yep. some Saturday games. So uh, Bayswater City beat Perth Glory Youth Team 1-0. Sorrento got up 4-1 over Armidale. Floriot Athena go top of the table, three wins from three, beating Perth Soccer Club. That was a big, big game there. The two powerhouses out of uh, Western Australia. They won uh, 2-1. ECU, June Dullop beat Inglewood United 2-0. Gwellop, the, sh- the jersey I've got on tonight, they beat Rockingham City 4-0 and Coburn City beating Balcata uh, 2-1. So, as I mentioned, Florida Athena, top of the table. Perth Glory Youth Team, uh, rock bottom on one point. And, yeah, Perth Soccer Club, the other sort of the second strongest club in, in Western Australia at this point, uh, down in six at the moment. Jake, did you pick any games from Western Australia? Uh, again, nothing that I wanted to really highlight in terms of uh, some pretty images and stats, but if I had to pick one, I would look at the Perth Soccer Club and Bayswater City. Um, Bayswater down a little bit in, uh, well, in, sorry, in terms of the rankings on the the ladder, they're sitting in third and Perth mm-hmm. are in sixth um, and the rankings have them reasonably close together as well. So that will be my pick. Bayswater, going back a few years, Jake, they were um, quite high on the rankings, weren't they? Well, they were the best side in Western Australia for a number mm. of years, yeah. Mm. Even yeah. even not not that long ago. We say it makes it sound like it's a while ago, but probably only four or five years ago. 
yeah, not even, I don't think. We were sort of doing our weekly shows maybe three, four years ago. And that's they're the, that, they're the club I remember the most from from Western Australia yeah. being uh, top anyway. So, all right, two more segments to go, Jake. What You're basically going to run us through any changes in the top 25 of the uh, rankings. Yeah, it's been a bit of a shake-up this week, Cody, um, for probably three clubs in particular. But uh, before I get on to those, we did have um, Blacktown City come back into the top 25. I think they've been one of the clubs we mentioned because they've bounced in and out. Uh, but they're back in at the expense of Hume City, uh, who dropped okay. down to 29th. Um, big one at the top, Cody, or towards the top in the A-League um, teams is that Melbourne Victory have fallen below Central Coast and below MacArthur in the past couple of weeks and they're now yeah. the lowest ranked A-League side which probably won't surprise anybody f- based on their form and their, their uh, A-League results but I don't know that we've ever seen them ranked last in the A-League side so mm. uh, yeah big fall from grace there um, and then the other two big ones were Sydney United that we mentioned that 5-1 loss to Northbridge and Heidelberg United losing to uh, Nunawadig Wading, um, somebody can correct me on the pronunciation there, from MPL3. Um, so those big losses or one of them being a big loss, one being a, a very big uh, upset has had a big impact on the rankings and they've both dropped four places each. So Sydney yeah, United wow. down in 18th, Heidelberg in 19th. And what that means for the other clubs is that Campbelltown uh, is now the second highest ranked MPL side without having played a game. They're sitting just behind <laughs> Avondale. Um, Oakley Cannons are, have moved up to 15th. Lions in 16th. Olympic from uh, Queensland, 17th. Uh, and then it kind of goes down from there. Take all these teams in the top 25, the MPL clubs. They're not really, aside from maybe who, Avondale, um, Olympic from Queensland, Peninsula from Queensland and Edgeworth. All the other teams really have been dropping points so far this year. Um, there's not really like a, I don't know, usually you have probably two, three clubs from each state who really dominate. Um, but yeah, it seems to be that all these teams, like like you just mentioned, Sydney United, Heidelberg, um, Rockdale have dropped a few points. Wollongong are dropping down and probably will be outside the top 25 soon. And, and the teams that have benefited the most so far, the teams who haven't kicked the ball yet, uh, Campbelltown and Adelaide Comets. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. It's uh, even lines from, from Queensland dropping yeah. points. Um, yeah, COVID shakeup maybe. I don't know. Mm. It's um, I expect this year there will be a lot of movement in and out. Um, Avondale are looking okay at the moment and we'll see what Campbelltown does. But, I, yeah, I'm expecting there. It will, actually, it'll be, we did do that little prediction, what, a couple of weeks ago on who the uh, teams that are in there right now, oh, yeah. will, you know, which yeah. ones will drop out and which will potentially come in. It'll be interesting to look back and compare the uh, start of the season to the end. I think there'll be quite a big difference. For sure. Okay, Jake, we're finishing things off uh, as per usual with our under-23 draft uh, pick. For those uninitiated, we pick 10 plays each of the age of 23 or under from the A-League. Uh, we went one for one, ended up with 10 plays each, and we they get scores each week uh, based on the Sports Deck Fantasy website. How do we – I haven't clicked the link, Jake. I'm clicking it right now. How do we uh, go this week? Uh, so there is that one game that's going on right now mm. between Sydney and Perth. So that uh, has yeah, has potential to change things. Um, apologies for the dog in the background again. That's little puppy right, still still learning his place. <laughs> um, at the moment, this round, it's quite close, Cody. You have picked up 40 – sorry – 54 points and I'm on 52 points oh, nice. um, and those listening last week will remember that you went into or finished last round slightly ahead of me on the overall um, so you were I think eight points up overall and now you you've got a 10 point gap uh, with as I said those Sydney and Perth players still to come um, of which that game I mean de- depending on goals because you have um, D'Agostino I think in there mm. I and who else do you have uh, you've got a Daniel Steins from memory from um, from Perth oh, yeah. as well, whereas yeah. I have um, a couple of players that won't be playing, but I do have Joel King and Callum Neuenhoff from Sydney. So without, I haven't actually looked at who's playing uh, or who's started. So yeah. um, it'll depend on how that goes. So you've got uh, a little bit of a lead still. Um, I'm, I don't know. It's the same as last week, okay? I'm kind of getting some points from the likes of Jake Brumer. Um, you got Connor Metcalf this week, scored quite well. Uh, and I got also Kinu Bacchus, who had the two games for Western Sydney. They're probably the, yeah, just looking down the list. Thomas Aquilina as well from Western Sydney. They're the biggest scorers yep. this round. 
yeah, he nearly scored uh, a winner right at the death for West of Sydney as well, Aquilino. Uh, I think he hit the crossbar or keep it just saved it over the crossbar. I can't remember, but all right. Well, there you go. It's still very close, Jake, with 10 points in it, uh, depending on how this this round goes after how many rounds, 14 rounds, 15 rounds, and there's only 10 points in it. That's like, you know, one goal in the, in the fantasy website. So we've picked pretty even teams at this point. And uh, I'll, I'll try and do it as we're talking, go to a quick check. But from memory, I think there's only about 23 rounds from a, from the fantasy league point of view. So we're actually mm. getting about probably two thirds. Yeah, 23 rounds. So yeah, close to two thirds of the way through it. Good stuff. Jake, anything else to add for this, for this week's show? Only that I'm excited um, for the weekend and all of the MPLs. Um, mm. Maybe one thing just to quickly mention, Cody, that we haven't before on the show at least is that I've been putting together a bit of a TV guide, I guess, for live okay. football. Yep. So for the MPLs that are playing on, you know, that there are Queensland, New South Wales, and South Australia all on MPL dot tv um you know there's bar tv sports for northern new south wales there's some of the other states play on their own facebook pages so basically yeah. i just put a list together each weekend of all of the games so if you wanted to watch live mpl football um it's kind of an easy way to see it all so if anyone is interested um i'll be doing that again um for and put that out tomorrow being thursday for the weekend um and we'll probably watch share that on facebook and twitter or wherever some some of our sure. social media yeah. somewhere so just Perfect. to let people know if, if that is something that you're interested in, uh, that'll be out there somewhere. Appreciate it, Jake. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening and watching. As Jake uh, sort of alluded to there, um, he's on Twitter updating things. So definitely give us a follow over there. And I pretty much only do Instagram at this point, um, promoting this this show with a few little polls and stuff. So uh, I, I hope to get a little bit more active there in the weeks to come, but we'll see if time permitting. But Jake, thanks for joining me this evening. Thank you, Cody. All right. We'll uh, catch you next week. Bye, everyone. See ya.